Ben Tolz, thanks very much for coming on the programme. Uh, let me start off uh, by asking you this. If you allowed school children, some very young children, to watch the dismemberment of the dead giraffe, why not just invite them in to see the killing? Because the killing could be when looked upon could be pretty cruel and actually there's no education in seeing the killing but there is a lot of education in seeing the dissection of the giraffe but where the vet can tell about the big heart etc but forgive me the whole thing is cruel i mean the, the dismemberment of this animal and then seeing the lions feasting on it i mean clearly freaked out some of the children that were watching it no and uh, it's not cruel, it's natural. I mean, carnivores live from meat, and the meat comes from other animals, so that's not cruel, that's just natural. And the dissection of the animal is what we do every time an animal dies in the zoo, so that's part of normal zoo life. And that's the same in London Zoo as in Copenhagen Zoo. So it's not cruel, that's normal. But in, in a London Zoo, we wouldn't be showing school children this process. We would protect them from no, it. No, but I... Th why protect them from real life? I mean, uh, I think people, uh, school children can actually w learn a lot from seeing this and learn a lot from what f marvelous animal uh, a giraffe is to see the big neck and all the vertebrates in the necks, which are actually only the same number as you and I have, and see the big heart. Why does it have a big heart? While it has to pump the blood two meter up in the air because you know, to reach the brain, etc. I may be wrong here, but I don't think any of the children who looked really quite horrified by this process, who were watching this animal being torn to pieces, were thinking about it, the number of vertebrae or the number of, of sinews in it. it. They actually did. You should have been there. They were very interested. They asked a lot of questions, and the vet answered a lot of questions, both from the, the adults, uh, from the parents, and the kids. So it is a very good. It's not the first time we do it. Well, it's the first time with a giraffe, but not the first time we make an open autopsy. But of course, not everyone in Denmark was happy with the decision of, of killing Marius. There was an online petition uh, signed by thousands of people. Why did you decide to kill him when there were two zoos abroad who had offered to adopt him just hours before? Yeah, but it's not a question of just putting the animal away somewhere who, to someone who wants to keep it. It has to be to a right place. And none of those two would actually fit into what we would consider a right place. As you know, the giraffes are part of a uh, European breeding program. And uh, such a breeding program has a purpose of ensuring a healthy population far into the future. And that is done by matching the gene pool, I mean the genetic composition of the various animals with the available space. And only when this fits together, you can actually make sure that you get a proper a uh, good population in the future but but and the offer was made by the yorkshire into... but the offer was made by the yorkshire wildlife park surely it's their it, decision whether they have it, genetic it, space for this animal or not no it's not because they are part of the breeding program as well and if you send our animals to yorkshire then it will take up space for a genetically more important animal than uh, from the breeding program than this one and that would not be a very good thing to do so it would actually be destroying for the program Look, I know that nature can be a cruel thing and scientists are supposed to be, you know, to stand away from it all, but I find your language in this all rather clinical and cold. Why? I mean, if we are talking about natural, uh, natural animal, natural meat, if you talk about the meat in, for the, from the animal for the, for the lions. Why is this cruel or cold? It's the way it was done. And it's the fact that there was a reprieve here for the animal and the fact that he was two years old and, as you described it, happy and healthy. Yeah, but what, what about the, all the, the rabbits that are shot in, in the UK in order to regulate the populations? And what about the roe deer that are shot in order to regulate the populations in Denmark? Or the wild boars in Sweden that we regulate every year? What about those? They're healthy animals too. They're healthy animals, but they were considered, rightly or wrongly, as a pest. This giraffe is not considered as a pest in your zoo. But what's the difference if you want to euthanize or kill it, is a, if it's a pest or not? Who decides whether it's a pest or not? It's a question of you would adapt the size of the population to whatever you have available of surroundings. In the wild, it's the forest or the, the fields. In the zoo, it's a available space in the zoos and the number of animals. It's a question of adaptation of the population size. I also understand that, and I can see the scientific reasons for it. I just wondered whether, by doing it like this, you're going about educating the public in the right way. Well, 
we, we think it is, and I actually have seen from the result of today, I'm, pretty, I'm not only pretty sure, I'm very much sure that this is very well, because we had a lot of public watching the autopsy, which I think is a good thing, and asking the right questions and all, thus also getting the right answers. And they go away from the zoo with the fascination of animals, not only the ones on the savanna, but also the inside of a, zoo, of a giraffe, which is very good. You work with animals. Yes. Do you actually like them? Yes, I do very much. And that's why I want to save them. And I want to make sure they have a healthy population. And, and doing what you had to do today was saving animals, was saving giraffes? It is, because you save the population. It's just like a vaccination, actually. It hurts when you get the needle, but it's actually in order to ensure a better life after the vaccination so you don't get all the diseases. So sometimes you have to do something which is not so nice in order to achieve something which is very nice, which is a healthy population. Without healthy population, forget about keeping animals, forget about have, having animals in the wild as well. But one doesn't tend to get dismembered and fed to the lions after a vaccination. Well, what's wrong? I mean, a giraffe in, the, in Africa is, is uh, eaten by lions too. And if we didn't feed the gi giraffe to the lions, we had to feed a cow. Is that different? But the zoo is a controlled environment, controlled by you. I mean, the wild is something rather different, isn't yes. it? No, your, control, your environment in the UK is as controlled as well. I mean, you control your environment just as we control the environment in the zoo. But we don't so control what no goes on in the in jungle. It. And the whole zoo is an artificial no. premise. It's based on an artificial premise. Yeah, that's right. But that's the whole concept of a zoo. We say we, we, are, we don't say we are nature. We are as close to nature as we can get under these circumstances. But we try to, to show the public what animal is, what the animal wonders are, and in all its aspects. And not a Disney world, not a Bambi world, but the real life. In the real life, lions eat meat. And meat comes, among others, from giraffes. So can we expect to see more um, killings like this and public dismemberments of other animals that are surplus to requirements in your zoo? <laughs> now you choose this in the special words in order to, to put a special emphasis on the negative I think these are, your, you no, these are your words. No, well, no, not. I don't, I've never t uh, talked about um, dismembering, but it doesn't matter. Yes, we will continue this way of, of managing our animal po population because that's the only right way to do it if we want to have a healthy population or to 50 years from now or 100 years from now. So we'll continue that, of course. Thank you very much. You're welcome.